Alabama, uh, Mr. Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Captain Kelly, uh, thank you, sir, for being here today and for your service to America's space program. As many are aware, you and your twin brother, Mark Kelly, are providing scientists with a wealth of information of the effect that human spaceflight has on the body. NASA is set to share the results of the study next year. Are you in a position where you can give us any previews of what they're finding uh, so far by sharing with us the most surprising or interesting things that you have noticed so far? Well, I, I mentioned in my testimony the difference between my initial 159-day flight and 340, my, my symptoms immediately upon return. I have gotten some data back, um, my bone mass, muscle mass data, uh, some of the data on my vision um, that, for me, I was kind of surprised that it was relatively flat in comparison to the 159 days. In other words, being in space for uh, twice as long didn't mean that I lost twice as much uh, bone mass. It was it was pretty similar. So I think some of these we do have some, um, you know, a good understanding to how to mitigate um, the risk to bone and muscle loss so we can stay in space longer. Um, the data with regards to my brother and the comparison with me, a lot of those samples just came back on SpaceX, my, my um, biological samples. So, you know, like most research, you collect the data, you analyze the data, you write the reports, have it peer reviewed. I think that type of genetic data, the effects of the radiation environment, the effects on my immune system, things like that, as it compares to my brother, are just going to take uh, much longer. But I was actually, you know, presently surprised that my bone and muscle data was pretty much flat um, between the two flights, although. You know, sub how I felt when I got back was much different. And this is a question for each of you, though, though I'd like to start with the uh, astronauts, Captain Cassidy first, working our way around, and then on the two ends of the table, whoever wants to follow them, feel free. With current technology, can NASA safely send an astronaut on a Mars mission without resulting significant adverse health risk? And if not, what should be done to safely protect astronauts on a Mars mission? Uh, so that's a that's a fantastic question uh, because that's where I think our nation should go in that to Mars and that's where our vision is and so how do we do that effectively and safely is a fantastic thing to consider and uh, clearly radiation monitoring and protection is is critically important there um, do I think that we could do it do that mission safely right now we could do it as safely as we think we can and the risks that that uh, there are certain risks that we don't know, and, that, and that's where collecting this data between now and going to Mars will keep my future colleagues uh, safer. Captain Kelly. Yes, sir. So, you know, my time on the space station, I was really inspired that building and operating this vehicle was the most difficult thing we have ever done. And I think it's proven that if we decide to do something and we set our mind to it and put the resources behind it, we can be successful, whether that's going to Mars or curing cancer. If we decide that that's what we're going to do and we, we devote the appropriate resources to do it, we can do it. Now, there are challenges uh, with going to Mars. Chris mentioned radiation, which I completely agree with. I think the physical challenges, that would be the number one concern I would have, is protecting the crew members um, on that long trip away from the protection of Earth. I think there are also, uh, you know, challenges in the systems that uh, keep us alive on board the space station. Um, you know, these are designed to work for long periods of time in low Earth orbit, but having them that can, you know, operate consistently, reliably, uh, get us to Mars and back is, uh, is a challenge. But I think it's clearly a challenge that if we decide that's what we want to do, then we can accomplish it. Well, with respect to the number one concern that both of you have mentioned, radiation, do we have the technology now to protect our astronauts from the radiation of a long-term flight to Mars and back, or do we need to develop new technology? Well, you know, I think there's, there's two ways to, to approach that. One is you get there really fast. So you're not exposed to the radiation environment for as long. Um, and the other one is uh, some means of, uh, you know, insulating the crew members from it. And I, 
you know, I'm not an expert on this, but my understanding is if you have a propulsion system that potentially has a, a magnetic field as part of it, that can act like the magnetic field of the Earth to protect us from certain types of radiation. But again, I'm not a, an expert in this area. Captain Lopez Alegria. Uh, thank you, Representative Brooks. I, you know, I think, um, could we do it technically, technologically, perhaps? It would be incredibly expensive. Um, the things that you mentioned, and my colleagues have mentioned about radiation, you could shield, you could, that takes mass, that makes the vehicle heavier, that makes the vehicle more expensive. The, the current propulsion technology, we've heard how long it would take the mission, we'd have to bring our food with us. There are so many things that it's possible to do. Um, I think a breakthrough in technology would make a lot of those problems go away or, or at least become much more easily to, to solve. One thing that I do think is going to happen in almost any case, um, it's going to be very difficult to have any kind of a reasonable abort possibility once you're on your way. And so this country is going to have to have a different risk acceptance posture, uh, not just for radiation exposure, um, which is right now 3 percent above the, the the normal population is what we ad admit for a risk of exposure-induced death. That will probably have to change. Uh, but also just the notion that somebody could have a, an unforeseen medical uh, problem on orbit or, or, sorry, on the way, which today we could have the crew member on the ground in a matter of hours. It would take potentially months to get them back. So we could do it. I think we have to go through some evolutionary processes in the way we think, both at NASA and as a country, for it to happen. Well, my time has expired, but if the chair would permit for Dr. Kahn and Dr. Williams to answer, that'd be great, but if not... No, certainly. Go ahead if you have something thank to you. add to that. Dr. Kahn or Dr. Williams, would either of you like to add anything to um, a Mars mission, safety, technological advances we might need to ensure health safety? Sir, I, I think our, my colleagues covered it quite well. Uh, physiologically, we, we believe that we could send people on a Mars duration mission out and back, you know, all, all the other safety concerns notwithstanding. Um, we, we believe we could do that. They, physi physiologically, I think it's safe to say that those astronauts would be forever changed. They would have a greater risk of developing, um, in all likelihood, they'd have a greater risk of developing a fatal cancer during their lifetime. Um, <clears throat> there are, um, and the associated changes in bone and muscle, I mean, they may have greater fracture risks in, in the cataracts and the, all, the, all the things we've talked about. One of the great challenges are the unknowns, and there are unknowns and unknown unknowns with regard to the increased duration of space flight. So that's what makes it so imperative for us to continue our studies and to continue gathering as much data as we possibly can in support of an eventual Mars mission. Dr. Khan, do you have anything to add? I, I would just add um, to what Dr. Williams just had to say that the, the committee that I chaired um, actually understood that there were such um, great unknowns and unquantifiable risks. And rather than try to answer the question that you pose about what technological break, breakthroughs would be necessary or whether we could do it today, uh, we gave them a framework to think about the ethics of exceeding existing standards and how to think about that. Um, since, as uh, Captain Lopez Alegria said, th there are existing health standards and we have to evaluate those standards in light of the mission that is being proposed. And that's what the committee that I chaired had to say. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your indulgence. Yes, sir. Thank you. 